A real coil has a resistance R and an inductance L. The coil is represented by a motor. The motor consists of its resistance R in series with its inductance L. To determine those values R and L, the coil is connected in series with an external resistor Rx of 10 ohms. Then we apply a sinusoidal voltage of 60 Hz, 36 volts, to the entire group coil plus Rx. We measure the voltage of the coil, 22.4 volts, and we also measure the voltage of the external resistor, 20 volts. Calculate the values of R and L, the resistance and the inductance of the coil. So this is the situation. An external resistor Rx of 10 ohms in series with the coil that is represented by its resistance R and its inductance L in series. We apply an external voltage between these two points, right? This voltage of 36 volts. When we do that, there's going to be a current flowing through that branch. That current is unspecified. I'm going to call that current I. But one thing is true, it's going to be the same current through the external resistor Rx and through the coil. That current will produce a voltage drop in this resistor and a voltage drop in the coil as well. And we know those uh, voltages. We know and that the voltage in the external resistor is 20 volts. This is 20 volts. And we know that the voltage in the external coil is this one is 22.4 volts. So we have three voltages and we know that according to KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of these two voltages, the voltage in the coil and the voltage in, in Rx, have to be 36 volts. In the phase or problem, we're going to choose a phase reference. In this case, I will say the reference for phases is the phase of the common current I. So this current is assumed to have zero degrees for a phase. Well, the voltage in Rx is going to have the same phase, zero. That's going to be our current. The voltage drop in this resistor is going to be in phase with that current. So this is the voltage in this resistor, the voltage in Rx. I'm going to write there 20 volts. Good. And the voltage in this resistive part of the coil, V in R of L, is going to be also in phase with that one and is in series with the other voltage. So this is the voltage in the resistance of the coil. And the voltage, this one, in the inductance of the coil is going to be at 90 degrees leading the current. This is going to be the voltage in the inductive part of the coil. If we add together these two voltages, this one has to be the voltage in the coil. If we add together the three voltages, this one, that is the entire voltage of the group. So we know this is 36 volts, and we know that this is 22.4 volts. Of course, we can use cosine law to find this angle theta, and subtracting that from 180 degrees, we find out this angle alpha. VR is going to be 22.4 cosine of alpha, and VL is going to be 22.4 sine of alpha. And then we say, well, those voltages, VR and VL, and 20 volts, all of them are proportional according to Ohm's law to Rx and I, to R and I, and to L and I. So you see how we can use proportionality to find the values of R and L? Let's do it. I'm using cosine law to find this angle theta, 116.10 degrees, and alpha is 180 minus theta, 63.90 degrees. This voltage Vr in the resistance of the coil is going to be 22.4 cosine of alpha, and that is 986 volts. And the voltage in the inductive part of the coil, this one, is 22.4 sine of alpha, 20.12 volts. 
From this resistor of 10 ohms with 20 volts, we compute the current. The current is 20 volts divided by 10 ohms. This is a current of 2 amps, of course. But we know what is the voltage in R. It's 986 volts, and we know the current is 2 amps. We can use some slot to find what is R. And that resistance is 986 volts divided by 2 amps for 93 ohms. For the inductive part of that uh, coil, according to Ohm's law, that voltage 2012 is the product of X of that coil that multiplies the current of 2 amps. So we can find what is the reactance of that coil. It's 2012 divided by 2. 10.06 ohms. But the reactance of an inductance is 2 pi f times L, like so, which means that the inductance can be obtained directly as 10.06 divided by 2 pi 60, which is approximately 377. That is 26.68 millihenries. And that is the answer of this problem. Thank you very much.